Good evening, everybody. We're on episode 61 of the Apostle Obstinate playthrough as Ike Upscribe. And I am, as always, your host, System Chalk. Let's figure out... Um, I didn't mention at the end of the last video that we are about to cross over into um, sort of uh, into um, our disease again, um, but we probably have enough time. It's gone in 32 seconds. All right, so we probably are going to have at least one bout of illness uh, coming from the loss of the blood. It would be nice if I could get some vitality in preparation for that. Um, but uh, once we're once we're at the glass garden. Um, or through the glass garden, uh, we can, you know, uh, we can deal with the, with the blood. I probably should have planned that a little bit better, but nothing we can do about that now. I've always wondered if the game would be improved by being able to cancel, like, so to a certain extent, you can kind of cancel a lot of different things that you would do in principle. Um, you know, I can stop reading or studying a work. You know, sometimes some textbooks I've had to read from the start uh, again because it's been too long since I've looked at them again. Um, but it's a little weird to have your study locked um, for a full minute. On the other hand, uh, I'm not necessarily sure that the game would necessarily be enhanced by the option. It would be easier for me to do some things, but things becoming easier for me is not necessarily um, the best decision for the game overall. But I've always wondered about it. One way or the other, though, I don't really think there's anything for me to do with the study verb other than work through the books that I already have, and I feel like we have already gotten a good handle on most of the threats that we would be facing. So we'll read The Sky and the Soul, The Grand Labor of Cal, an ascetic poet writing at the court of the Shadowless Kings. Cal's verses are brief, obscure, and often dominated by images of violence. A star is a pinprick, but the sun is a wound. <clears throat> So let's carry on, and we'll do kind of the rest of this as as time goes by. I think old and happy far-off things will turn into a painting. Um, the rest of it, I think, probably is pretty uh, pretty self-explanatory in terms of how we're going to approach it. We'll deal with disease when it emerges, we will destroy evidence when it comes up, uh, and we will try to avoid basically the consequences of our actions, to put it as bluntly as I can. Uh, okay, season of despair, so I want to be a little mindful of dread if it emerges. Although, if I'm going to be focusing on painting more, and it is something I have been focusing on, um, probably I can get away with... Um, I can probably get away with um, generating the contentment that way. One worry I do have is that if I want to get some... If I want to get some... Um, vitality, uh, I should be going to a work site, but of course I can't go to a work site immediately following this painting because I have the restlessness, and if I don't deal with the restlessness, that's going to turn into dread. Um, so I'm probably going to have a little, uh, a little difficulty with the disease when the time comes. I have not shirked. Oh yes, and we do need to continue on the expedition for... Um, Tower Rebecca. Okay, so Lantern or Knock, and then Heart or Grail. Okay, so I think I was right on the Heart thing. Uh, let's add Pope Clifton as our Lantern representative, and then between Heart and Grail, this is... Um, well, I guess adding one of my Cyprians probably makes the most sense to deal with the the curse. That'll uh, that'll be sort of the fastest. I've created something both distinctive and beautiful. It will very likely enhance my reputation. All right. Well, we got a lot of stuff. Oh, fascination. I wasn't expecting that. Um, something we can deal with, but uh, it does take up my does take up my dream verb. I always thought that you got the fascination from uh, having too much passion, but that's clearly not what happened here. Okay, got a little staleness for that. No, that's not very surprising. Um, five funds is very welcome, though. So presumably we could pay for the, the medicine if we wanted. Uh, I am, however, I think I'm going to... I think I'm going to have to deal with... Uh, I think I'm gonna have to deal with the uh, the staleness of the painting, or basically the restlessness in the painting. Uh, those are probably my two higher priorities right now. 
So that's dealt with. This I can get rid of with dreaming, but I want to get rid, you know, I want to use the dream for something else first. And then I may have to go to the work site um, to get the vitality, but we'll see. Again, it depends on the timing for things. We should be fine, but it doesn't hurt to have a little... One of the things I've noticed, and you've probably seen this through the, through the video, or the series of videos, I tend to get very focused on the immediate challenge. Even if I, you know, if I articulate, if I say I want to do X, it's a better chance that I'll wind up doing X. But even then, I do tend to focus on sort of near-term priorities, mostly because I like to see these verbs uh, counting down all the time. So it doesn't hurt to just take a second and smell the roses and say, okay, let's let's make sure I'm doing, I'm doing what I need. Glass garden. Uh, the peacock door, proud and shining amethyst, its glow tinting the snow-pale shapes of the glass garden. This is the highest point where mortals may penetrate the mansus. No crack mars its surface. This is not a door that opens, although it is said that it may bleed light. Okay, so there's still things that we can get at the spider's door, but uh, obviously the peacock's door is the... As it is described, it is the highest point in the Mansus. In my dreams, I found the way to the peacock's door, sometimes called the Gate of Eyes or Pride's Dismay. Uh, now we are going to generate another fascination through uh, consuming the blood, but we have to deal with the forlorn blood, and we also need to get make sure this stuff is done within 30 seconds. So we're going to start with uh, we're going to start with that. I consumed a little vial of blood. Lie back. Close my eyes. Tomorrow I will be stronger. I'll almost certainly find this hidden door. I'm happy about that. I suppose I could add the, you know the followers now. I just don't see much point in doing so. All right, so that'll be three fascination that we have on the board. That, of course, means that fascination is now a very high priority to get rid of. Um, it's always possible to be deader, Cal states. The watchman goes before. None but seven may go after. Yet surely we are born to the glory as the sparks fly upwards. So another formula can curse it. <clears throat> some risk, uh, continue reading our our books. Uh, actually, one thing I could try and do would be to read Sunset Passages to get some uh, dread to combine with the fascination, but if I do that now, of course, I get hit by the Season of Despair. So, we'll try an account of Kanishk at the Spider's Door. Oh, actually, we've not translated that. Okay, well, um, I don't think it hurts to go on a little bit of a translation spree, so let's get that done now. We'll use our Aramaic to read read the work, or translate the work. I'm much recovered. More than that, I'm sumptuous. The sclera of my eyes, the veins in my wrists are a swim with gorgeous serums. When the vitulation comes, I'll be the centerpiece for our delight to prove their appetite to enact the grail. So, uh, it may be that we've avoided the illness, or the uh, the loss of health that would come from uh, that would come from the uh, um, from having the forlorn blood, um, but I do want to get these, this fascination dealt with as soon as possible. So, one minute for each. Pay for paints. The minion is returned. The evidence has been destroyed, and I am a little safer. So, 14 seconds on this Caligine is still not the uh, not the best timing, um, but uh, I can I can live with it. Um, and again, if I'm going to be painting so much, um, it does sort of raise a question in terms of whether or not I want to, um, you know, whether or not I want to be doing the charm offensive like I did with Heart. So let's maybe take a minute. I think. Um, if I send a Cyprian, they're going to abduct someone. Um, if I send not... So here's my guesses in terms of it. So there's the fortune... To Actually, to be honest, I don't even remember what the fortune telling did. I think it got me like an erudition or an influence or something. Um, Winter is just straight up murder. Uh, I believe this is to capture someone. Possibly burglary. Uh, fix my reputation. I genuinely don't remember what Moth does. Um... Edge is probably murder as well, um, and Forge is repairing items. So I will maybe verify it. Seduce a stranger? No one refuses a Cyprian. Almost no one, yeah. It's not the most effective use of my talk verb, but I wanted a second to... 
you know, it, now's not a bad time for me to just check some of this stuff out. We're likely going to get hit by the the notoriety, but of course we've already destroyed the evidence, so it's not as big of a deal. Something special, it may provoke a reaction. All right, my recent work is considered notable. Actually, here's a question. Can I seduce the weary detective? No, it's all about murder here. I always like the idea of the mystique being something that like, you know, my fans are, are really insistent that I'm being persecuted um, and getting in the way of the Suppression Bureau that way. I have no idea if that's why Mystique is effective at getting rid of the, you know, like blocking the, the notoriety. Um, but uh... all right, uh, I'm just taking a second to think. I was talking a bit about other things that I would want to do with the work verb, and yet it seems to me that painting is still the the way to go here. So this one, I think I'll add the three notoriety. Um, I'll call this one, look how happy I am. Expedition continues. Our expedition plans for the next challenge. It'll consume funds. I can add funds now, or I could send another follower. So uh, we send the Cyprian. It should be enough to deal with the. Should be enough to deal with the. Um, the. Uh, uh, the curse. Now, if I want, I can actually read this book right away. Um, I feel safe enough. Kanishk sought to... Actually, let's just take a second here. Look, Kaluli, uh, sorry, Kauli, Kanishk's victim and lover, wrote this account, perhaps posthumously. Kanishk sought to become a name, and in, uh, in pursuit of that end, he made Locke Kauli the vessel of his appetites, promising Locke that they would ascend together. At the spider's door, he betrayed his lover. Paint it again, and we will hit ourselves with composure one more time. I do tend to, even in, when it's a matter of just a you know a few seconds, I do like taking uh, the sort of the longest lasting of any of the sort of the threats, uh, just because you know you've seen it a couple of times in the series where if I had a couple of seconds to work with, um, you know, work with something, um, I would have had a better outcome. So just getting in the habit of, of looking for those efficiencies is something, one, it's something I like doing, um, but number two, I, I do actually think has a, a tangible benefit. Uh, again, we're not dealing with our reputation, so let's, you know, uh, again, it's it's wasting the talk verb for a minute, but let's just see if my assumptions were correct. So yes, burglary. My disciple can probably use their talents to harvest treasures from the unsuspecting. I'm not that desperate for money, so... I said I wasn't going to worry too much about my reputation, but I'm not actively going to pursue, um, you know, I'm not going to actively pursue a generating um, reputation. So we do know Ill illness is coming up in a minute. This seems as good of a time as any to pick up the uh, some manual labor. Day's work, I have not shirked. Call upon the Red Grail, which gives life. The Red Grail's vigor will almost certainly preserve us from the curse. This gives us a little bit of time for the notoriety to decay, but of course it also means that there's going to be four notoriety on the table for them to find, as opposed to um, one. Still no staleness, although we're not earning as much uh, from the painting as we used to, so... Unskilled labor, backbreaking work for meager pay. Is this the best that I can do? Again, just hitting tab to combine the stacks. It's also important to remember once we get past this, the curse shrivels, our power was stronger than the power that was here. The curse won't touch us. Um, once we're done this one, we know we won't be getting any more books until we start pursuing um, whatever we can find in uh, uh, in the next uh, the next region. 
The Chiliarch listened to the betrayal and for then forced Kanishk into his service. The Chiliarch cannot be denied. Lok Kauli remained to write this work and to describe the outer magics of struggle and contest. So, an operation of the Labite, a series of mystic exercises that requires both dedication and terror. Alright, more translations. Um, actually, I'm going to slightly adjust the order here. So, the Book of Thrones gets me secret histories. For me, it's worth thinking about what do I need uh, lore-wise, and at the moment, I don't actually have... We've already got to the highest level of the Mansus, so the need for certain types of lore is quite a bit less than it used to be, but we will still need... Um, we will still need secret histories, so... The Book of Thrones, a legend of the Shadowless Empire, transcribed by Alexander Peterhans from the annals of a secret shrine in Anatolia. Right, and 30 seconds for the fascination. Again, this is one of these cases where um, I try not to let my caution over, you know, override common sense. So can this fascination hurt me in 34 seconds? No. Um, the worst that could happen would be a season of visions pops up, but then it's going to need 60 seconds to activate. So is there a benefit to me combining the fascination and fleeting reminiscence? Not really. It may be that I, you know, maybe I want a fascination to get rid of dread. Maybe I want uh, moth influence for something. Maybe I want to upgrade the fascination into another type of, um, you know, into another type of influence. More importantly, if I combine the fascination and the fleeting reminiscence, that means that this dream verb is going to be taken up for 60 seconds. Now, when I get sick, again, it's going to take a certain period of time for the health to, health to translate into illness. So it's not like I can't, um, I can't, you know, I, I need to use the dream slot right away. But uh, if I want to use the dream slot for something when I would normally be healing, now is the time for me to get that out of the way. Um, the best that I could say would, it would actually be to go through the peacock door to actually finally get this, uh, you know, finally get this thing done. And uh, obviously we'll be probably seeing that happen in the next stream, but yes, let's do it. So, in my dreams I found my way to the peacock store, sometimes called the Gate of Eyes or Pride's Dismay. In my dreams I know the path uh, through the glass garden to the peacock's door, the most admirable of doors, the door which shines like a mirror. Perhaps with the right resources I can pass it. So, the peacock door does not open exactly. It requires a tool, and uh, I could make it a big mystery, but in this case I know if I use the wild ring mirror, it'll open it. The peacock's door reflects the mirror I hold in my sleep, and the mirror reflects the peacock's door. Already a sensuous shiver ripples its surface. It aches for fracture, and when it finds that satisfaction, I will enter. Um, there is a way that the game sort of leads you to that conclusion, um, but uh, it's it's one that I've known for a while. So, all right, let's have a chat with Yizabet. Uh Actually, let's make it somebody who doesn't have two wounds, just in case I do want to use it. So, Hoodwink, my disciple can probably use their talents to part fools from their treasures. Okay, so it's kind of like, it's kind of like Knock. I'm assuming all of this generates notoriety, it usually does. Um, so, I don't want to, don't want to volunteer into taking more notoriety. The day is done, but so am I. Uh, sorry, the day is done, and so am I, but I've earned my pay. All right. So I'm going to keep this vitality aside. Uh, in 36 seconds, we will combine uh, with the illness, and uh, we can go back to our painting now. So one nice thing is that we've lost some notoriety just from... Um, or, well, at least some time on our notoriety just by doing another activity. Um, but in this case here, painting is my primary source of income right now, so I want... Actually, you know what, let's just keep... Let's really milk our reputation here. And I will use a fleeting reminiscence as my inspiration. No need to extend the vitality, we've got more than enough.
Beneath the tower is a cramped cellar with cracked slate walls. The proportions, it should be a perfect cube, but somehow uh, they are too many corners. Blue light festers at the junction of the ceiling and, the, and wall. The floor flexes slowly like the skin of a bubble. It echoes to a stamped foot. What spaces open beneath? I always like these particular descriptions because this is, you know, if it wasn't already obvious, you know, you're starting to go into these places which are really sort of testing the, the edges of, of sort of reality as we know it. The Book of Thrones, um, in the sorry, Legend of the Shadows Empire, transcribed by Alexander Peterhands from the Annals of a Secret Shrine in Anatolia. In the first and greatest history, a subject of the Shadowless Empire of Persia travels to the west to the kingdom of Persids. Uh, there, he becomes a protege of the tutelary Persid deity. Sorry. Um, the scarred man who lives in the dark. He returns after seven years to put his skills at the service at the Shadowless Empire, becoming their golden general. I'm starting to run, run at the edge of the timing, but I really wanted to finish. Um, I really wanted to finish the uh, the expedition for the next uh, the next stream. All right, so clearly I don't want to just stay at the peacock's door. The big challenge here that I find with the uh, actually, you know, if I'm honest, this is not any worse than the the threats you face at the stag door, right? So, in the case of um, in the case of uh, certain parts of the the Mansus, you are going to run the risk of negative outcomes. Um, it's you know, if I go to the Painted River sometimes in the Stag Door, I'm going to wind up with fascination. Uh, same deal with the Lodge of the Sage Knight and the Orchard of Lights. Uh, likewise, if you go to the Worm Museum, it really feels like this one always seems to come back with dread. It's not actually true. You can get some good stuff out of the Worm Museum, but you know. It looks scary, it is scary, and, you know, every time you see something bad happen here, you're like, well, what were you expecting? Um, the ideal here, for me, particularly because I'm giving up a resource in order to, you know, to get here, uh, usually I want to be walking away with secret history or, in my particular case, some languages. Um, I'm going to be a little more cautious this time and just go to the Red Church. I've never been able to figure out a pattern to find out what's in the Worm Museum or the Red Church. Um, but I figure in, in this case here, I, I'm not going to get dread if I go to the Red Church. Whereas if I go to the Worm Museum, I might have some dread and I don't know if I'm quite equipped to... Actually, you know what? I am equipped to handle it. So, screw it. All right. Well, it was disappointment all all along. So, I have seen too much. A nameless gnawing fear has its teeth in my hopes and existential. I dreamt last night of the Worm Museum. The hours have set wards about it and warnings before it, but they have left it open to mortal adepts who can prove themselves by reaching it. Perhaps they hope to inspire revulsion against the things that bred in the corpse of the sun. Those things are here still, always dying, never dead. They came from nowhere, the warnings say, and if they complete their work, the Mansus will be nowhere one day. Oh, I'm actually not equipped to deal with it. I had rather thought that I had um, contentment. It doesn't seem like I have any contentment here. So. Oh, I really blew it now. <laughs> All right, well, that's just a problem for me to deal with uh, next, um, next stream. I think I'm gonna leave the again. I want to leave the dream slot open. So I do have a use for my forge followers. I'm gonna get oops. I'm gonna get that dealt with right away. Sorry for the extra time. Alright, fascination's coming up, so I probably want to keep an eye on the light in the skull. And here we are. Bundle the books into a sack. Hurry up, the hand holds to the tower stump. The sky above ripples with cobalt aurora. The hills around are washed with shutters of blue light. There is a high and si singing sound from the stones of the tower as we leave. Lightning cracks from the sky, and suddenly everything is silent. The tower stump is gone. Alright. 
Let's try and get people back to where they need to be. So more notoriety. That should be the last for a little while. We've got Pope Clifton. Yeah, sorry, that's not true. There's going to be one more. Uh, and we have How the End Will Begin, a book of bleak prophecy that I cannot read. The Twin Serpent Tantra. The Furious Tantra. And Bitter Black Salts. No ordinary chemist would produce these dark gleaming crystals, not without the touch of the forge. All right. So again, um, where we're at in terms of the playthrough, we have completed all of the expeditions that will get us books. Um, our next few goals are going to be to understand Vac. There's actually two languages that I don't understand. There's Vac and Deep Mandiac. Um, but Vac is the one that I need right now in terms of works. Um, there are... A few sort of fires that I need to put out. One of them is going to be my reputation with the Suppression Bureau. But again, this is something that a Caligan can handle. I probably want to keep one uh, in reserve. Well, I think I could probably send them on the expedition. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll clear out Foxley the Meadows. And then uh, really what we're going to be doing is uh, trying to sort of repair our reputation a little bit. Get rid of some of the notoriety so that I can build up uh, funds through Glover and Glover. Um, but again, there's no point in trying to do that until after uh, I've sort of finished my notoriety generating activities for a little while. So that'll probably be what next week's broadcasts are about. This is one of my longer videos, so again, I apologize for going over time, um, but I hope it was worth it for you. As always, if you like the video, do feel free to leave a like uh, or a comment if you there was something that caught your eye on this one. I do always like reading those. If you've not done so already, feel free to subscribe and you can uh, hit the notifications if you want to know when the videos come live. As always, uh, it's Wednesday at 6 and Friday at 6 uh, in the Eastern Time Zone. But until next time, thank you very much for watching. Enjoy your weekends, and I'll see you all on Wednesday.